All right. Uh, well, thank you, Rick, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, Dave, for the uh, Pyramid of Pain badge. We're all repping it today. Uh, and also thank you, everyone, both virtually and in person uh, for joining us and joining me as we talk about, you know, uh, the economics of cyber threat intelligence operations and consumption and production. All right. So before we begin, just a quick rundown of today's uh, agenda here. Uh, first, I want to start off with an introduction about myself, what I do, what my uh, work experience is like, um, as well as my dog, obviously. Uh, and then moving on, we'll talk about what is economics, right? And what is the economics of cyber threat intelligence operations? Next, we'll talk about consumption and production, essentially the outputs of any CCI operations. Then we'll talk about people, process technology behind CCI operations, what drives the operations themselves. Moving on, we'll talk about resourcing, scarcity, trade-offs, because ultimately CTI operations are not running with infinite resources, right? So there has to be trade-offs and there are sca uh, scarcity involved. Next, we'll talk about economics of demand, or also known as Intel requirements. What drives the demand or what drives the supply to the demand itself, the, the requirements themselves. Finally, we'll do a quick recap of you know, what uh, we've been talking about and some key takeaways, and hopefully everybody can learn about uh, the sort of economics of cyber threat intelligence. So once again, my name is Sherman Chu. Currently I am a solution delivery manager with Deloitte where I focus on providing clients with cyber threat management, cyber threat intelligence uh, operations uh, advice and, and operations. Uh, previously, I was the technical lead for a state and local government's CTI team where we built the CTI operation from the ground up. Prior to that, I was a senior Intel analyst at a financial institution and in my past life, I was a non-commissioned officer with the US Army. As you can see, my dog is also now in consultant mode. All right, let's, so let's start. So economics, right? We've all taken classes before in high school, college, AP econ, micro, macro econ. I can promise you right now, no charts. No, there's no Pareto optimal charts or whatever. We're talking about the principles, the basic principles and fundamentals of economics here. So as a quick refresher, Let's talk about the definition of economics itself, right? As according to Merriam-Webster, it is a social science concerned with the description and analysis of production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. Now, how do we apply that to CTI then? Well, if we apply to CTI, then we can think, about, think of it as the involvement of, or the understanding of resources and scarcity that enables or limits the production dissemination and consumption of CTI. Now, you, you, you know, everyone here will be uh, hearing consumption and production a lot, so let's talk about that for a little bit. So one can think of consumption and production as two sides of the same coin. They're both outputs. They share similarities, right? Uh, in that they have to be timely, accurate, uh, and relevant. They uh, can be tactical, operational, or strategic in nature. Uh, they also require people, processes, and technology in order to actuate or actualize. But the biggest difference between consumption and production is that consumption is really about the mapping of available intelligence to your defense, whereas production is a, generate, is a generation of intelligence for sharing and other people to consume. So to expand us on a little, bit, a little bit more, with consumption, you are basically collecting mostly primarily finished intelligence and then essentially breaking that apart, extracting the core information from that to apply to your own you know, security posture. Um, whereas producing is uh, you, you, you're collecting from a lot of raw intelligence data, your internal telemetry or perhaps external telemetry to provide new insights of threat behaviors or unknowns. So to further sort of expound on consumption, we can also apply the, the mindset of consumption into the uh, Intel lifecycle here. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, I promise you, uh, but at the same time, you know, I think it will be good for us to think about it through the phases, right? Because you still have to plan and direct what to collect, uh, what to consume and how to consume. Then you have to go ahead and collect the information. Next, you have to process this, obviously, because, you know, most collections, uh, most fish intelligence are uh, very uh, verbose. And then afterwards, you got to analyze whether that is applicable to your own environment and how to, what, what do you need to extract from it and ultimately consume it. So creating detections, analytics, hunt packages, if you will, providing that to you know, your respective teams, your SOC, your threat hunters. And then of course, uh, without saying, there has to be tuning and feedback. 
you know, you can't just throw a detection in and just call it a day. You want to see whether it is spitting out false positives or do we need to tune for a certain, you know, um, IOCs out of the uh, detection, right? So it essentially follows this, this, the similar phases within the Intel cycle. Okay. So now let's talk about people, process, and technology. You know, we've heard about PPT framework before, right? We, it's a means to assess, you know, economic activities in the country or perhaps, you know, workflow activities within the organization itself. And in CTI, it pre presents the fundamental factors that allows or enables for the consumption or production of threat intelligence. So how about we just break it down um, a little, little more granular and just look at each of the elements individually. Okay, so let's start off with people. Personally, I believe that is the, the most crucial uh, element of, of, all of the three elements itself. People are the backbone of CTI. Now, when I talk about people here, I'm not just talking about the nuclear core uh, analysts within CTI itself, CTI team, um, but more so anyone that, that is related or impacting the production and consumption of cyber threat intelligence. You know, we're talking about, of course, the analysts, as uh, Chris has, talk, uh, has been talking about, also detection engineers, your SOC, your CERT, your uh, leadership, your executives. These are all people of CTI. And of course, they all come from varied backgrounds. Um, if I were to pose a question to, uh, to the audience now, both online and in person, and ask them, what is your background? I'm sure everybody would come from, would, would say, you know, I'm from IT or I'm, I'm traditional uh, Intel, or I come from you know, more of an academic background. And the point here is diversity is key, right? The background is key uh, for, for, in, for the people of cyber threat intelligence. And of course, uh, people drives process and technology. We'll talk about that more in a bit. So process. So kind of like your furniture assembly instructions, it tells you how to do things, when to do things, the protocols and controls, right? But in, in CTI or mostly in processes themselves, we're, we're talking about two levels of processes. There are macro processes and micro processes. Macro processes are more akin to your phases in your, in your Intel lifecycle. You have the collection phase, your processing phase, your analysis phase, right? But I would say more importantly are the micro processes that we often forget about. The small sort of controls and procedures that we should follow in order to make sure that these, these major phases succeed. So take collection, for example. During the collection phase, we might have a micro process that involves the evaluation of sources and information, right? It may be the admin royalty code that we are using to determine the reliability, confidence level of you know, a certain source of information. Or perhaps during the analysis phase, you know, we, we have certain structured analytic techniques that we're using to ensure the quality of assessments. So these are all micro processes. And one thing based off my, pre, my, my personal experience and talking to a lot of colleagues within the ministry itself, we often forget the importance of defining, implementing, and following these microprocesses. And it is very important for us to spend time to develop these uh, microprocesses. And time is something that requires you know, people to commit to. So the last element within the PPT framework is, of course, technology. It needs no introduction. We're all using some sort of tooling and technology here. You think about your SIEM, your threat intelligence platform, your link analysis tool. Maybe it's your Python script that helps you uh, automate some of those mundane, more rep uh, repetitive tasks, right? These are all technologies that we are leveraging so that people can do their task more efficiently and that processes are followed through. Now, technology itself does not operate in a vacuum, meaning you can't just turn it on and just let it run. It obviously also requires people, people to, uh, once again, uh, develop, maintain, or update. As we all know, if you just turn on a threat intelligence platform or tip and just let it run and collect all the, uh, all the threat, uh, threat feeds, it becomes really noisy and really bloaty, right? You need the analysts to go in and curate the information, the data. So all to say that it, within the PPT framework, people are the core and people is a finite resource. So speaking of resource, as we said, resources are finite. We hit onboarding people, having the ability to hire on people you know, is, is finite and people can only commit to a certain amount of time or hours in their lives to their job. And of course, financial resources. Some technology needs to be procured, monetarily speaking. 
or you have to spin up a team dedicated to the sort of upkeeping of the technology themselves. These are all resources. And the resources that, that, are, that are scarce, we have to look at trade-offs. We can't have everything, right? Even in Metaverse, we don't even have legs there yet, so. So let's talk about some of the high level sort of uh, trade-offs that, we, uh, that we, we can look at for both the P, P and T. Starting off people. One of the things I wanna highlight here and emphasize is that people cannot effectively consume and produce simultaneously. The processes surrounding consumption and production can differ greatly. Some technologies can do both, but at that point, there's a lot of tuning involved. And as an organization itself, we need to sort of lean on one side, unless you are you know, a multi-billion dollar uh, organization where you can spin up two teams, right? Um, and I would also argue that consumption is harder than production. Because consumption of threat intelligence requires you to understand your own attack surface, the courses, the defensive courses of action that you can take in order to consume that intelligence and turn it into something that will benefit your organization. So while there are no scarcity for processes, right, it does require time and expertise from people to implement and refine. We can try to copy pasta a bunch of, you know, uh, process, processes from, from textbooks or CTI textbooks, slap it on and call it a day, but it is not uh, essentially compliance to your, to, to your organization's requirements, your, you know, uh, the workflow, and does take people to go in and look at what works and what doesn't work in terms of processes and really refine them. Um, so that's time and expertise. And of course, technology, right? Technology is there to augment processes and people. Um, and it, uh, but it also requires people to go in and maintain and tune and upkeep. So you can, you can, you can think of that as more technology needs more people to actually manage. Um, so some, and there are often times uh, where a lot of organizations out there, when they spin up their CTI, their first sort of instinct is to purchase everything under the sun. Um, and by focusing on technology first, we oftentimes would run into the problem of people maintaining it. And a lot of this technology would de uh, deprecate. So people, people centric CTI. Okay, so we'll talk about some of the balancing or balances between the, the three elements here. Um, as you know, reality dictates, equilibrium, equilibrium is hard to achieve in economy and both in any organizations. So got to present you with three hypotheticals here. These are extreme hypotheticals, but what, what we want to do here is to showcase what happens, uh, what are the results of, of missing one element over the two. So let's just say that we are on, you know, are on the uh, up and up for processes, uh, technology, and kind of low on people here. What really happens here is that you know, we cannot adequately follow through the technology that we have, we have uh, implemented or the processes that we have set, uh, um, set forth. And people have to, will have to bounce between different work streams. And that, that's the last thing you want. You want people to be focusing on you know, a, a, a single issue or a few issues, not too many. And people can be strained and overworked. And the output itself is suboptimal at this, at this point in time. Now, the second hypothetical here. So let's just say that we have a good team of people. Uh, we have implemented, implemented you know, the processes, right, for the life cycle, the, the phases, as well as sort of the microprocesses. But we're lacking in toolings and technology. When it comes to you know, processing a huge amount of data, that will be, uh, you know, it will become very painful in that you know you, you're probably hand jamming into an Excel sheet and then having all these pivot tables, right? It takes a lot of time, although Excel is actually still great. Um, I'm, not, I'm not jabbing it, <laughs> taking a jab at it, obviously. Uh, but you know, if you know, when compared to say, like you actually have well-defined Python you know, scripts that can help automate a lot of these parsings, um, one would take a lot more time than than um, than the other, than the latter, if you will. So, additionally, if we're trying to disseminate uh, for intelligence through a non-automated process, it's not fun blasting emails to everybody. You know, every single time you have finished intelligence products, some might think of getting a, a sort of centralized knowledge uh, management or perhaps a delivery, like a CMS to deliver their finished intelligence, right? So technology does matter in terms of streamlining the people in the process. So let's just say that we have people, we have technology, 
but we're kind of lacking in the, the sort of implementation of processes. Well, now you're talking about inconsistent outcome, right? We're not following any instructions here. So we're kind of just going, you know, just doing things on the whim, right? Especially when it comes down to assess, assessments and analysis work. You need structured analytic techniques. You need structured processes to help with providing consistencies in your assessments, your confidence levels, so on and so forth. So without that, your, you know, your products, your output is going to be inconsistent and may actually impact you know, your either superior posture or your credibility as a finished intelligence provider, right? So processing definitely matters. But overall, to sum it all up, you know, we have to think about people first, right? Create, you know, everything is, is without people, there are no processes, there, there can be no technology that can be actuated or actualized. Okay, so let's talk about demand, the fun part. So when we talk about demand in the, in the, in the CTI sense, we really are talking about Intel requirements. Now, unlike traditional demand within you know, um, most economic activity, in CTI, we can actually have more direct control of demand slash Intel requirements because it is a, essentially a contractual agreement between the, the CTI team and your leadership, what can be supplied right for their demand um and additionally you know we can also evaluate via the people uh processing technology uh to understand what intel requirements can we commit to right um say an intel requirement requires a lot of uh people pe you know people to to actually uh commit to uh maybe it is tracking down a nation state threat actor right and uh you're 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 you need to spin up you know, uh, personas or perhaps uh, additional threat hunters, right? That's, that's a lot of commitment from people side as well as processes as well. So if you look at your, your current organization uh, or at least your org chart, can you actually commit to that, right? Maybe you just have three people. Obviously you wouldn't be able to directly um, track these you know, th uh, threat actors or these, these groups, right? Um, so be realistic, obviously based off what your current uh, resources. Now, another thing that we want to do as well is to peri per periodically assess your consumption and production. You know, generally speaking, on an annual basis or perhaps like a recurring basis, what are you producing? What are you consuming? Is it up to par? Is you know, are are your people? Um, are you do you have enough people to to actually commit to all these demands? Um, and it's and it's critical because oftentimes we, uh, you know, we are contractually agreeing to demands that we want to um, sort of achieve and not what we can achieve, right? So can and one or two different things. We should always start off with what we can achieve based off of actual resources, finite resources, and then moving on with what we want, then plan forward. So always keep that in mind, right? Because CTI operations, does, they do, it does not happen in a vacuum. It requires resources, time, uh, financial resources, and people. Okay, so quick recap here. As I said, no, uh, no charts here, but we'll, we'll, do, uh, we'll go through some takeaways here. Um, the economics of CTI, through the lens of economics principles, we can understand the scarcity of resources that affects consumption and production. And you know, speaking of consumption and production, they are two sides of the same coin. Um, and when you flip a coin, usually, usually one, one side faces up Right, it doesn't fall both uh, stand up straight. Meaning, you know, commit to either consumption or production. CTI human resources, as I mentioned, they cannot consume, produce at the same time. Yep, uh, and you know, use people process technology to evaluate how much can you consume, how much can you produce, and then we should always think about Intel requirements as demand and assess whether we can supply based on the current level of resources. Okay, well with that, thank you.